dear viewers of factory.com by vetri from pandicherry last class i have discussed what is what is equilibrium what are the types of equilibrium under the types i have discussed chemical equilibrium and ion equilibrium under the chemical equilibrium i discussed there are two types one is homogeneous another is heterogeneous under this i have derived kc and kp equilibrium constant based on the law of mass action also i have discussed the factor which influence the chemical equilibrium that is lee chatelier principle also i have discussed today i am going to continue by discussing ion equilibrium so that is equilibrium involving ions that is called ion equilibrium so let me discuss so in order to understand this ionic equilibrium so first let me discuss theory of ionization under the theory of ionization so i have to give important for arginine theory so if i discuss arginine theory you will have a very clear idea regarding ionization okay let me start now arginine theory so first let me discuss the postulates proposed by arginius what are the postulates postulate 1 there are two types of electrolytes namely strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes can kind you of follow me so there are two types of electrolytes namely strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes strong electrolytes examples given sodium chloride potassium chloride strong electrolyte and weak electrolytes example given ammonium acetate water ammonium hydroxide ammonium acetate water and ammonium hydroxide can you follow me so automatically you can raise the question how to identify which is strong electrolyte which is weak electrolyte let me guide you can you follow me carefully because we have already discussed the periodic table you can recollect that from memory and then you can have an idea now from the periodic table i can say the all the hydroxides of alkali metals all the hydroxides of alkali metals that is the lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium francium and the alkaline earth metals will be strong electrolytes it's a base acid all mineral acid scl nitric acid sulfuric acid phosphoric acid all these mineral acids are strong electrolytes not only that the salt of strong acid strong base salt of strong acid weak base salt of weak acid strong base they are all again strong electrolytes can you follow these are all strong electrolytes then you can raise what are the weak electrolytes generally all organic acids and organic amines are weak electrolytes organic acid formic acid acetic acid benzoic acid these are all weak acids and bases amines methyl amine ethyl amine anilene yeah all these they are weak uh, amines they are also again weak electrolytes and this, and in the inorganic point of view water and ammonium hydroxide also they are weak electrolytes so we can easily suppose question can be asked one among the following is a weak electrolyte one among the following is a strong electrolyte you must be very careful to answer this okay now let me go further so there are two types of electrolyte one is strong electrolyte another is weak electrolytes let me go for the second possibility the electrolytes dissociate in solution into charged particles called ions this is the interesting information the electrolyte dissociate in solution into charged particle called ions when i say ion there are two types of ion ions are two types namely cation and anion cation positive ion anion negative so specific example let me take a electrolyte ba on ionization it's a strong electrolyte in this a strong electrolyte assume it is giving positive ion b plus and negative ion a minus this is the interesting information so electrolyte dissociated solution into charged particle ions so when we are getting ion there will be positive ion and negative ion when ions are formed the third possible is giving a very good a very interesting information there may be an equilibrium between the dissociated ion and the unionized electrolytes or molecules 
This is a very, very interesting kind of quality. There may be an equilibrium between dissociated ions and ionized molecule. Now you should be careful. In the case of strong electrolytes, there will not be any equilibrium. So usually one side error will be indicated. But only in the case of weak electrolyte, you will get the equilibrium which is shown as here. Yeah. So B A reversible error, error reversible error, B plus and M minus. So the possibility three clearly indicate applicable for weak electrolytes. So there may be an equilibrium between dissociated ion and the unionized molecule. Only a small amount will be ionized, the other amount will be unionized. So there, there will be an equilibrium between unionized molecules and ionized uh, molecule, uh, that is ions. So for this cases, now we can apply the law of action, that is K equal to equilibrium constant here, B plus into M minus divided by BA. We know already the case of chemical equilibrium, we have discussed a KC and KP, here I am just generally representing as K, kind of follow, this is the interesting information. So, there may be an equilibrium between dissociated ions and ionization molecule only in the case of weak electrolyte. Can you follow? Okay. Postulate 4. Okay. The electrolyte as a whole is neutral. And hence, the total charge and the cation is equal but the opposite that of anion. The total number of positive charge will be equal to total number of negative charges. Can you follow me? But the most important, it is not necessary total number of positive ions will be equal to total number of negative, negative ions. This is the interesting information. Let me repeat it, kindly follow. The electrolyte as a whole, which may be strong, which may be weak, is neutral and hence the total charge on the cation is equal but opposite to that of the anion. So for example, sodium chloride, a strong electrolyte is a salt of strong acid, strong base, strong acid SCL, Strong base sodium hydroxide on ionization gives sodium plus and Cl minus. The interesting information. So one positive, one negative charge, one plus, one minus, equal. So you take for under salt, calcium chloride, on ionization gives Ca2 plus and 2 Cl minus. So total number of positive charges 2 plus, total number of negative charges 2 minus. Charges are equal, but number of ions are not equal. One positive ion and two negative ion. So ions will not be equal, but charges should be equal. This is the most important information regarding the postulate. The electrolyte as a whole is neutral. And hence, the total charge on the cation is equal, but opposite to that of anion. But that is not necessary. Total number of anion and cation will be equal. This is the interesting information regarding postulate 4. Fine. Postulate 5. The properties of solution of electrolytes are the properties of the ion present in the solution. This is a very, very interesting information. Again, the theory of ion, the Arrhenius theory says. The properties of solution of electrolytes are the properties of ion in the present in the solution. Suppose we are taking a solution of SCL. SCL means it is SCL is a strong electrolyte giving H plus and Cl minus. So what will happen now? If now the solution, aqueous solution is containing H plus ion. That means the, the solution is acidic in character. The properties of solution, acidic nature of electrolyte is due to the H plus ion present in the solution. Same way, if you take sodium hydroxide, again you dissolve it, the module undergo ionization give sodium plus and OH minus. So OH minus will be present in water. So aqueous solution now, Sodium hydroxide again contain OH minus, which is basic. So the properties of solution is basic due to the presence of OH minus. So let me repeat again. The properties of solution of electrolytes are the properties of the ion present in the solution. So acidic due to H plus, basic due to OH minus present in the solution. The next one. Pass layer 6. This is something related to the current. The electric current does not produce ions. But it has only a direct wave Kindly of follow I me. Mean, you will be studying when you come for the plus 2 electrochemistry. But let me give a short form. That means you have to take a cell. A cell means it consists of two electrodes. Kindly recall it, Daniel cell. The interesting information is they take a zinc rod dipped in zinc sulfate solution and a copper rod dipped in copper sulfate solution. 
So if you connect externally by wire, internally by salt bridge, that you tube contains sodium chloride, potassium chloride, it will form a cell. So left side zinc electrode, right side copper electrode. Now if you combine these two forming a cell called a Daniel cell. So now what will happen? Now this is the cell. So the idea, you just think of this is a specific example I am giving. So when electric current is passed through a solution, but when you are passing, it will not produce, it will not give assist to produce in 2 plus and SO4 minus. But it has only a directive, it will give direction, it will influence the ion to opposite. That means zinc plus will move to the negative electrode and that is SO4 minus will move to the positive electrode. That is the interesting information. So electric current does not produce ion, it will not produce ions. But it has only a directive effect, it will give direction to go opposite electrode. The next one, postulate 7. The conductivity of an electrolyte solution, electrolytic solution, generally increases with increase in temperature. This is the very interesting information. This is again related, related to the electricity. The conductivity of an electrolytic solution generally increases with increase. That means whenever temperature increases, conductivity increases. These are the important postulates of Arrhenius theory to understand the strong and weak electrolyte. Now, what are the evidences to favor the Arrhenius theory? Because whenever you propose a theory, we have to give experimental evidences. So here I will point out some few evidences to support Arrhenius theory. Number one, the enthalpy of neutralization of strong acid by any strong base is always constant. Can you follow? Enthalpy of neutralization of any strong acid by any strong base is always constant. This we have discussed already under the thermodynamics and uh, their neutralization. So here what is happening, in all ways in this case, there is a reaction between H plus and OH minus ion, that is why it is always minus 57.3 to close the bulb. Irrespective of uh, acid, irrespective of the base. So it is strong acid, strong base, that is all. But the value will be same because, so it is a reaction due to H plus and OH minus. So that is why it is constant. So this proves Support the argument because it is the due to H plus and OH minus ion. So ionization theory. Okay, second one. The color of any solution is due to the formation of cation or anion. So color of any solution is the color of the, the formation of cation or anion. Specific example. So you can say that is a nickel, green, and the chromate, yellow, potassium permanganate, manganate, again pink, all these. It is due to the ions, due to the color corresponding to the ions. So ions are responsible for the color. That is the, again this is an evidence for Arrhenius theory. That means ions are present in the solution. The third and most important thing. The concepts such as Oswald's dilution law, we are going to discuss. Common ion effect, we are going to discuss. Solubility product, we are going to discuss. These three concepts are based on Arrhenius theory. Based on ions, kindly follow. So we are going to discuss after this a short while. As well as dilution law, common ion effect, and solubility product. All these three concepts are based on Arrhenius theory. So which is giving evidence for Arrhenius, supporting Arrhenius theory. The next one, four. Chemical reactions between electrolytes are almost ionic reactions, which favors Arrhenius theory. Kindly follow. So reactions between electrolytes, strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes, are almost ionic reactions. So which is our Arrhenius theory? A specific example, Ag plus plus Cl minus gives HCl precipitate. So this is supporting the Arrhenius theory. Which is very interesting. The next one, fifth one. The conductivity of electricity by electrolytic solutions is due to the presence of ion, which is our so ions, when you go for conductivity, again when you come for plus 2, you will be studying electrochemistry. There are two types of conductors, that is the conductors. One is metallic conductors, another is ionic conductors. So in metallic, electrons are responsible, in ion, in um, electrolytic, and ions are responsible. So here, ions are responsible for conductivity, which favors Arrhenius theory. Very interesting information, evidence. The next one. The abnormal qualitative properties of electrolytic solutions, the abnormal qualitative properties of electrolytic solutions 
can be explained with the theory of electrolytic dissociation. Again, Faber's theory. What will be abnormal colligative properties? Again, you will be studying environment you come for the first level, that is, uh, colligative properties or dilute solution. There, normally, whenever it takes, for example, sodium chloride, it's an electrolyte. So, that this, all the qualitative, what is the qualitative property? Any property which depends on the number, but not on the nature, is called qualitative property. So, if you consider sodium chloride as a single particle, the answer will not be correct. Because, on ionization, sodium chloride gives sodium plus and Cl minus. So, we have to take into account of two ions, then for the calculation, two particles, we have to take calculation. So, this abnormal behavior can be explained with the theory of electrolytic dissociation. This is the interesting information. These are all evidences in favor of Arrhenius theory. The last one. Fast reaction in the case of strong electrolyte favors Arrhenius theory. Suppose we are doing some reactions between strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes, etc. So in the case of strong electrolyte, the reaction is faster, rate is faster. But in the case of weak electrolyte, the rate is slow. Now, what way we can explain it is due to the ion present there. So ionic reactions are faster than neutral molecules. So small number of ions less and more number of ions, so all these will affect the rate. So fast reaction in the case of strong electrolytes favors Arrhenius theory. This is the interesting information. Evidences in favor of Arrhenius theory. Let me go for the next one. Drawbacks. Limitations of Arrhenius theory. Drawbacks of the Arrhenius theory. What are the drawbacks in this theory? Number one. They are going to say the Oswald's dilution law based on Arrhenius theory fails completely when applied to strong electrolytes. So we are going to discuss the Oswald dilution law which is applicable only for weak electrolytes. I have already said, what is a weak electrolyte? Weak electrolyte means 100 percent will not ionize, only a very small amount will ionize, that will be equilibrium between ionized and unionized uh, electrolytes. Strong means 100 percent will ionize in all concentrations. So, the Oswald dilution law based on Arrhenius theory fails completely when applied to strong electrolyte. In the case of strong electrolyte, why it fails? Arrhenius theory fails to explain. Number two, the value of equilibrium constant, Kc and Kp, we have already discussed there, the value of equilibrium constant varies with the concentration in the case of strong electrolytes. Why? Again, the Arrhenius theory fails to explain. It's not giving any explanation. It's a drawback again. Okay. okay, the next one. <clears throat> there are serious difficulties in the calculation based on ionic equilibria supporting this theory when applied to strong electrolytes. This is another interesting limitation. There are series of difficulties in the calculation based on ionic equilibria supporting the theory when applied to strong electrolytes. So, whatever when you apply to strong electrolytes, it fails. Only it is applicable for weak electrolytes. So, these are the Limitations of Arrhenius theory. Okay. With this idea, theory of ionization, now let me enter into the next chapter is acids and bases. Acids and bases. What is an acid? What is a base? If you ask any student, they will give different version, different idea, and different definition they will give. So in order to give a very clear idea, let me give now. There are three concepts, three theory to explain the properties of acids and bases. What is an acid? What is the base? How will it behave? So, if you want to explain, there are three concepts, three theories are there. What are they? Number one, Arrhenius theory. So, with the help of Arrhenius theory, I can explain an acid or a base. The Lowry and Bronsted theory, another important theory, we can explain what is an acid, what is a base. And finally, the Lewis theory, which is supposed to be a modern theory. I can again explain what is an acid, what is a base. So, now, Kindly follow students, a number of questions will be asked based on this. So, let me go one by one theory with a suitable example, kindly follow me. First, let me now take Arrhenius theory. That is theory of acids and bases proposed by Arrhenius. According to Arrhenius, what is that? So, according to Arrhenius theory, an acid is a substance. An acid is a substance which gives only H plus ion. Kindly follow. H plus ion has only cation when dissolved in water. Why? The base is a substance which gives only OH minus as only anion when dissolved in water. 
very very interesting term. Very simple definition. So I can simplify this way. According to Arrhenius theory, as it is a substance which will provide H, H plus, base is a substance which will provide OH minus in water. So when you dissolve in water, any substance which, which will give H plus acid, any substance which will give OH minus is a base. Very simple. So just see below. HCl, it is dissolving in water to give H3O plus and Cl minus. Cl minus that is in aqueous water. So H plus accepted by a water giving H3O plus. So why we are calling an acid? Because acid is donating H plus, so water is accepting. So what is the base? And HCl is an acid. Well, actually, automatically in this case, HCl is an acid. Kindly follow. Coming for same way, sodium hydroxide combined with H2O. Sodium hydroxide is providing OH minus, so it is a base. So how this is this is taking place only in water. The most interesting information is in the absence of water, we cannot explain, we cannot uh, compare the acidity and basicity. This is the very interesting information. So, any substance which will provide H plus acid, any substance which will provide OH minus base when dissolved in water. Okay. Based on this, what are the limitations? If I say this, is it possible to explain all the acids, all the bases? No, it's not possible. So, let me give the limitation drawbacks. The theory, that is Arrhenius theory, defines acids and base in terms of aqueous solution. Just now I explained. Only in water it is giving but not in terms of substances allow themselves. As such, whether it's an acid or base, it's not giving any idea. Only after dissolving, it is giving idea, depending upon the nature of providing H plus or OH, where it is giving acid or base. So as such, it is not giving any idea regarding acid or base. That is the limitation. Drawback. Number two, it fails to explain acidic properties of substances containing no H plus. So there are number of substances which are acidic in nature, include experimentally, but it's not containing H+. So the, according to this theory, we cannot explain it's an acid. A specific example, aluminum chloride is an acidic substance. That's no H+. Ammonium nitrate is an acidic substance. It's not containing H+. But so in this, in liquid ammonia, if it is all, it will not give any idea, the interesting information. So a number of cases, there is no H+, at all, if it is, but still the substance are behaving like acid, but cannot be explained by Arrhenius theory. The next one. It fails to explain basic properties of substances containing no OH minus. So there are substances which behave as a base, but which is not containing OH minus, so the theory fails. So for example, calcium oxide. We know calcium oxide is the base. What way? You take a specific example, calcium oxide reacts with the carbon dioxide give calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is a salt. So calcium carbonate salt means so definitely carbon calcium oxide should be a base. The carbon dioxide is an acid. So automatically see calcium oxide is an base. It's not containing OH minus. So according to Arrhenius theory, so we cannot define this. So these are the drawback limitations of Arrhenius theory. So in order to overcome this problem, so let, let me go for the next theory, Lowry and Bronson theory. Lowry and Bronson's theory, finally follow. What is this theory says? According to Lowry and Bronson theory, an acid is a substance which donate proton to any other substance. And base is a substance which accepts proton from any other substance. A slight modification. So very simple. So according to Lowry and Bronson theory, any substance that provide proton acid, any substance that accept the proton base. So not necessary OH minus is there. So automatically, this very good idea we are getting here. A specific example, acetic acid, acid, CH3COOH, acid, water with a base. Now what happens is a weak acid, so it is a reversible have indicated maintaining equilibrium. So, acetic acid donating H plus, converting into H3O plus, and acetate ion is there. Can you follow? So, according to the Lowry and Bronson theory, acetic acid is an acid because it donates H plus. Water is the base because it accepts H plus. It's a very interesting information. There are another interesting information I want to point out here. So, suppose we take forward reaction, this is acetic acid, it's an acid, water is the base. Now, you take the reverse reaction, in that case, this is the H3O plus. Here, CH3COO minus. Can you follow? Yeah, according to the same loud and Bronson theory, if you consider reverse reaction, so H3O plus is an acid because you don't need H plus. 
Sales there is the over minus is the best because it lacks a pleasure plus. So we are indicating a new name for that. It's a conjugate acid. This is a conjugate base. Pay the follow. This is a very, very interesting information. So the change in strength of acid when medium changes is called. Here on there are another interesting information I want to give you. Suppose, so far what we are discussing, suppose you take acetic acid, dissolved in water, and de determine the acidity. The same you take acetic acid in some other acid in the media, changing the solvent, now acidity of acetic acid will change. So, that change in strength of acid when medium changes is called leveling effect. Normally, question can be asked. What is the leveling effect? The change in strength of acid when medium changes is called leveling effect. This is a very interesting information you must know. Thus, kindly follow, SCL acts as a strong acid in water. And so, in order to give an idea, you want a leveling effect, I'm giving it. SCL acts as an acid in water, but as a weak acid in acetic acid. Strong acid in water, but as a weak acid in acetic acid. So, SCL is common, but media in first case, water is the media, second case, the acetic acid is the media. The first case is a strong acid, second case, a weak acid. So, this change in strength will call the leveling effect. Okay. What are the limitations of a lower end process here? It fails to explain acid and base behavior in the case of aprotic solvent. Because it gives a very clear idea. Whatever substance donate H plus acid. Accept H plus base. Now unfortunately, what will happen now? A number of substances, that is acid and base being in the case of aprotic solvent. Aprotic means not containing hydrogen. H plus. A number of solvents, say for example, sulfur dioxide is behaving as a solvent. So, a number of cases, carbon dioxide we can use as solvent, a number of cases. So, without containing H, so in that case, this, this theory fails. This is the very interesting information. Next, let me go for the Lewis theory. The Lewis theory, nothing but modern theory. Based on electronic acceptance and donation, they can be fine. Okay, this is an interesting information. It's also known as modern theory. This is the interesting information. Question can be asked. Modern theory. Okay. According to Lewis theory, an acid is a substance which can accept a pair of electrons, and base is a substance which can donate a pair of electrons. Very, very interesting. It is based on the accepting and donating a pair of electrons. Let me repeat again. As an acid is a substance which can accept a pair of electrons, and base is a substance which can donate a pair of electrons. So based on this, I can classify the, the Lewis acids into a number of types. And this acid, I will call it as Lewis acid. So kindly follow me. Question can be asked competitively. One among the following is a Lewis acid. One among the following is a Lewis base. Question can be asked. So how to determine the Lewis acid? Let me give you. There are three types of Lewis acid base. What is, again, I already given. What is an acid? Acid substance which can accept a pair of electrons. So type 1. Molecules containing less than octet of electron will behave as Lewis acid. So when you go for octet theory, we have studied already under the chemical bonding. When you are forming a molecule or a compound, the central electron should have the 8 electron in the outermost. If any molecule is not obeying this 8 electron, less than the 8 will behave as an acid. Specific example, boron trichloride and aluminum trichloride. So boron trichloride, for example, if you take electronic configuration is 2s to 2p1, 3 electron in the outermost. And if you go for chlorine, it is 3s to 3p5, 7 electron in the outermost. So I can write 7 electron. So in this case, seven, the same way I can write seven electron in this case, and same way here also I will write seven electrons. Kindly follow. Even though I am indicating different symbol for electrons, dot for boron and into for chlorine, it's not like that. Just to differentiate, that's all. So if we take the central boron atom. It is only 6 electrons in the outermost. Whereas if you go for chlorine, each chlorine there is 8 electrons. This is the interesting information. The idea here it is, in the central and in the boron trichloride, there is only 6 electrons. So this molecule will always move towards electrons. 
a pair of electrons. So, boron trichloride is an acid because which can accept a pair of electrons. Same thing for aluminum chloride also. Right, so this is type 1. The second type, molecules containing double bonds. Specific example, carbon dioxide. Whenever molecule contain a double bond, will behave as and again leave as acid. A specific example, I can explain. Calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide giving calcium carbonate, a salt. Calcium carbonate is salt. Salt means it is formed from an acid and base. So we know calcium oxide is a base. So automatically, carbon dioxide is an acid. How? This is a leave as acid because double bond, containing double bond. It can easily polarize. So I am confirming that. See, this is the interesting information. So molecules containing double bond will behave as a Lewis acid. The second type. Third type, all positive ions will behave as Lewis, Lewis acids. H plus, NA plus, Cl plus, anything. Any plus will take. So there are three types of Lewis acid. One is molecules containing less than octet of electron. Example under the boron trichloride, aluminum trichloride, right? Molecule containing double bond, specific example carbon dioxide and positive ion. These three types of Lewis acids. Same way, let me go for the Lewis base. Base is a substance that will donate one pair of electrons. Can you follow? So here again, I can classify into two types. One is molecules containing lone pair of electrons. Next, lone pair of electrons. Specific example, ammonia. So go for electronic configuration of ammonia. Nitrogen is, that is 2s to 2p3. So totally five, that is five electrons in the outermost. One, two, three, five electrons in the outermost. So here automatically, Hydrogen, one hydrogen, another hydrogen, another hydrogen. So automatically if you consider now, so the central atom, it is having eight electrons, but this lone pair, which is involved in, not involved in bond formation, so this can donate to some other molecule which are in need of electron. So ammonia is the base because it is donating a lone pair. So molecules containing lone pair of electrons will behave as a base, leave its base. And all negative ions will be, because they will be always having a lone pair of electron, will behave as a Lewis basis. This is the interesting information regarding theory of acids and bases. With this idea, let me go for the next, the, the most important concept, Oswald's dilution law. This law is applicable only for weak electrolyte. Kindly follow me. It is applicable only for weak electrolytes. I already explained weak electrolyte. Acetic acid is a weak electrolyte, ammonium hydroxide is a weak electrolyte, water is a weak electrolyte. Okay, so this Oswald dilution gives a relationship, I am going to derive now, between ionic, that is correspondingly ionization constant, concentration, and degree of ionization. So these three factors can be correlated, we can derive. So I am going to derive this, kindly follow me. The idea here it is. So first let me take uh, Ionization of weak electrolyte under this weak acid will take specific case. Now I have already pointed out Oswald dilution law is applicable only for weak electrolytes. Under the weak, let me take first weak acid, I will take the weak base. So under the weak acid, specific example is acetic acid. CH3COOH weak acid on ionization gives acetate ion and H plus. Kindly follow. Under percent it's not ionizing, only a very small amount gets ionized. Right. So for this particular equation at equilibrium, I can introduce a term here, KA, A, that is equilibrium constant K, A indicates an acid. So equilibrium constant for acid, so I can say ionization constant. So it is given by the product of these ions in the right hand side divided by acid. So this is the equation. So I can give K A equal to acetate ion into H plus ion divided by acetic acid molecule. This is K A. The same way, for a weak base, the specific example, ammonium matter also, I can write the equation equilibrium in this case. Reversible equilibrium. So ammonium ion and OH minus. Ammonium matter is under ionization to produce ammonium ion and OH minus. But 100 percent not ionizing, only a very small amount quantity gets ionized. So for this particular reaction, I can write the equilibrium constant, I can write the form of Kb, B indicate base. Kb equal to the product of ammonium ions into OH minus ion divided by ammonium hydroxide. So this is the very very interesting. So whenever any weak electrolyte undergoes ionization, the product of ions divided by the unionized molecule will give the ionization constant. Acid means I will use K, K A, base means I will use K B. Okay. Now the next question you can ask. 
what are the factors which influence and which depend on K A and K B? What are the factors which affect K A and K B? This you must know before going for the derivation. Number one, nature of electrolyte will affect. This is very interesting. Nature of electrolyte, strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte. Among the weak, because it's applicable only for weak electrolyte. So weak means, so how much percentage is weak? 10%, 20% like that. So as we can say in terms of degree of ionization we are going to discuss. So 10% and it's 20% ionized. So it is based on the nature of electrolyte. The nature of solvent also will affect the ionization. Whether it is a protic solvent or a protic solvent. So it will affect. That's the interesting information. And a different solvent, nature of different solvent will affect the ionization concept. Okay, okay. And the concentration of the solution also will affect. Normally, this is applicable for only dilute solution. So, when you go for highly concentrated solution, even again it fails. The temperature is another important factor will affect the K and KB. Higher the temperature, higher will be the ionization. That is the interesting information. And presence of other electrolytes, impurities also will affect ionization concept. K, A and K, B. So this is the factors which influence K, A and K. Now let me go for derivation. Can you follow? This is the most important part. Derivation of Oswald's dilution law. So I am going to derive Oswald's dilution law for a weak acid, acetic acid. It is something like a related, like that we have already discussed on the equilibrium. Chemical equilibrium we have discussed based on the law of mass action. Same, similar, light difference. Can you follow me? So how I am going to this, uh, derive? So acetic acid undergo ionization to produce acetate ion H plus. The reversible arrow indicates it is ionized and unionized molecule. They are in equilibrium. So okay. Before starting the ionizations, so initial number of moles of acetic acid is one. Let us assume and zero acid ion zero H plus. It's not getting ion. It undergoes ionization initially. Okay. After some times at the equilibrium. Let us say alpha in the degree of ionizations, some amount of again the acetic acid molecule can ionize. I can say alpha in the degree, 5%, 10%, whatever it is. So alpha in the degree of ionization. So automatically, what will happen now? So 1 minus alpha in the remaining. So alpha number of moles of the acetate ion corresponding alpha will be the H plus ion. That is present. So what is the concentration of the equilibrium? We will assume total concentration C. So C into 1 minus will be the, the concentration of acetic acid and C, C alpha is the, uh, the uh, concentration of acetate ion and C alpha is the concentration of H plus ion. So let me repeat again. C into 1 minus alpha will be the concentration of acetic acid at equilibrium. C alpha the concentration of acetic acid ion. C alpha again concentration of H plus. But we know the ionization constant Ka from the equation. So we will substitute this value there. So for this weak acid, we know this is the equation. So we know Ka equal to acetate ion into H plus divided by acetic acid. So substitute all the value. Instead of acetate ion, I can do C alpha. Instead of H plus, I will substitute C alpha. And divided by acetic acid, I will substitute C into 1 minus alpha. So multiply. So C squared alpha square divided by C into alpha. So C C cancel. So I can get now Ka equal to alpha square c divided by 1 minus alpha that is so i can write approximately alpha square c because alpha is negligible quantity so 1 minus alpha is most negligible so simply i can write ka equal to alpha square c for some for specific for many specific purposes you can use alpha square c by 1 minus alpha but approximately you can use ka equal to alpha square c this is the interesting information so from that i can get some more so this is i, I got from that ka equal to alpha square c for your the character line, acetic acid. So I can rearrange. What is alpha square? Alpha square is equal to Km by C. What is alpha? So alpha is equal to square root of Km by C. This is a very interesting information. Kindly follow. I am getting a relationship equation relating alpha degree of ionization, Ka ionization concept of an acid, C concentration. This is the very, very interesting information. C concentration. So this is the most important information regarding a solid dilution for a weak electrolyte. For that is weak electrolyte, in this case a weak acid. The same way I can derive for a weak base. It's very simple, similar, identical. So let me repeat again. 
So ammonium nitrox and anti ionization, reversible arrows indicates the small amount of anti ionization to produce ammonium ion and OH minus ions. So for this particular reaction, so initial number of moles, one mole of ammonium nitrox is present, zero moles of ammonium ion, zero moles of OH minus initially. After some times, alpha is the number of moles again reacting from the uh, NH, uh, ammonium hydroxide. So number of moles at equilibrium will be 1 minus alpha for ammonium hydroxide, alpha for ammonium ion, alpha for OH minus. Let us say. Now, concentration at equilibrium as usual, C into 1 minus alpha. That is for ammonium unionized ammonium hydroxide. C alpha ionized ammonium ion, that is o, well, C, C alpha again OH minus. As you shall be known from the law of mass action, Kb equal to ammonium ion into OH minus ion divided by ammonium hydroxide. So substitute this value in this equation, you will get the, the for the weak base. So I can substituting this Kb equal to C alpha into C alpha divided by C into 1 minus alpha. Automatically C alpha into C alpha, C square alpha square. So into C into 1 minus alpha. So C C cancel. So we are getting KB equal to C alpha square 1 minus alpha. As usual, you know, for the main, all the equation you can use this equation. For approximation, we can use this equation because alpha is very, very small quantity, negligible quantity. So 1 minus alpha, nothing but same. So it is nothing but you can write C alpha square. So from this, as usual, we can get now alpha squared equal to KB divided by C or alpha equal to square root of Kb by C. So what is the main difference between? So in the case of acid, alpha is equal to square root of Ka by C. In the case of base, weak base, alpha is equal to square root of Kb by C. That's the only difference. So these are the two interesting equations. We can get a number of information they can. So let's go for the next. This is the regarding for Oswald dilution. What are the limitations of Oswald dilution? Strong electrolyte do not obey. This is applicable only for weak electrolytes. So strong electrolyte will not obey Oswald dilution law. I have already pointed out. It is called Oswald dilution law. So you see that it is called Oswald's dilution law. So automatically it is not applicable for strong electrolytes. So strong electrolytes do not obey. The second important drawback. Even weak electrolytes, kind of this is the most important information. Even for weak electrolytes, do not obey at high concentration. So at the high concentration, even weak electrons, they are not obeying the Oswald dilution law. Only at the dilute solution only, it is now obeying. That's why we are calling it as Oswald dilution. Kind of follow. Okay. With this idea, now let me go for the another concept, the common ion effect. So common ion effect connected with weak electrolytes. It may be a weak base, it may be a weak acid. This concept we have to discuss under the weak electrolytes. So let me do what is common ion? Kind of follow this factor is very very important for important application we have. In qualitative analysis, they are the identification of cations. So common ion is giving a very playing very important role. And um, uh, what you can call it as the purification of sodium chloride. Again, common ion effect is playing most important role. So let me do this. What is common ion? Definition. The effect which suppresses the dissociation of a weak electrolyte. Kindly follow weak electrolyte. The effect which suppresses the dissociation of a weak electrolyte by addition of a strong electrolyte containing one ion common with weak electrolyte is called common ion. Very, very interesting information. Kindly follow. Let me repeat again. The effect which suppresses the dissociation of a weak electrolyte by addition of a strong electrolyte containing one ion common with the weak electrolyte is called the common ion effect. This is a very very interesting information. Okay, let me explain with a specific example you can appreciate. Now let me take, let me explain first taking a specific example of weak acid, acid acid. Kindly of follow, I have already explained to you, acetic acid is a weak acid. So it undergoes ionization to produce acetate ion and H+. It's an irreversible equilibrium because only a very small amount is undergoing ionization. A larger quantity is still in the form of acetic acid. So it's an equilibrium. There is an equilibrium between ionized and unionized. In this case, weak electrolyte acetic acid. So acetate ion and H+, they are in equilibrium with unionized acetic acid molecule. This is the interesting information. 
So what will happen now? From this, we know we have already derived this is according to law of mass action k equal to a state ion into h plus divided by a state ion. This is the interesting interpretation. So with this, now let me help you. What will happen? Kindly follow me. Suppose, what is the common ion? The, the, the ionization of weak acid, weak electrolyte is depressed. What way? By addition of a strong electrolyte containing one ion common. Suppose, let me take this way. Let me use SCL. It's a strong electrolyte. SCL is a strong electrolyte. So SCL is a strong electrolyte undergoes ionization to produce H plus and Cl minus. Kindly follow. H plus and Cl minus. So it is providing H plus. It's a strong electrolyte containing one ion common, which is common here, which is present in weak electrolyte also. So when I am adding H plus HCl, a small quantity, what will happen now? The right hand side H plus concentration will increase. Then according to Lee principle, the equilibrium will be shifted towards left side such a way that adding effect would be nullified. Adding effect will be nullified. That means by addition of HCl, which is containing one ion common in this case H plus, the equilibrium will be shifted towards left side. That means ionization of acetic acid is suppressed. This suppression is called common ion effect. So, by adding a strong electrolyte containing one ion common, in this case HCl providing H plus, the equilibrium is shifted from right side to left side. That means it is not undergoing ionization. The ionization is getting depressed, getting decreased. This suppression is called common ion effect. Very, very interesting information. The same way, I will take another example. What I will take now? I will take sodium acetate. Can you follow? Sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte. Undergo ionization to produce sodium plus an acetate ion. Again, this is a strong electrolyte. It's a salt of uh, weak acid strong base. I already pointed out this is a strong electrolyte. So when I add sodium acetate in this equilibrium, this weak acid, what will happen? which is providing one ion common, a state ion, which is already present in the right hand side, a state ion. So when I add a strong electrolyte sodium acetate containing a state ion, so which is already present, so the concentration on the right side increases. So according to Lee Chattel principle, the adding effect should be nullified by shifting the equilibrium towards the left side. That means the ionization of acetic acid is suppressed. Again, common ion effect. What is the common ion here? Common ion is a state ion. So, either by addition of SCL or by addition of sodium acetate, the ionization of acetic acid is suppressed. This effect is called common ion effect. I hope you have a very clear idea. The same way, I can explain with weak base also. Common ion effect, I can explain with the weak base. Can you follow? Weak base ammonium hydroxide undergoes ionization, partial ionization that is ammonium ion and OH minus. Majority of the ammonium hydroxide is unionized. So there is an equilibrium between ammonium hydroxide and ammonium plus and OH minus. For this particular uh, weak electrolyte, according to the law of mass action, Kb equal to NH4 plus into OH minus divided by NH4 OH. Can you follow me? So, suppose I am using a strong electrolyte, sodium hydroxide. I have already pointed out, hydroxide is of alkaline, alkaline metals are strong. So when I, when I add sodium hydroxide, it is a strong electrolyte, undergo 100% ionization, give sodium plus and OH minus. So, it is providing OH minus which is one ion common. Ammonium hydroxide is also containing OH minus, sodium hydroxide is also containing OH minus, so ion common. So, the concentration of the OH minus increases on the right hand side. When concentration of the OH minus increases on the right side, the equilibrium will be shifted towards left side due to the Lee Chattel principle. So, when equilibrium is shifted towards left side, means automatically the ionization getting suppressed. So, ammonium hydroxide ionization getting suppressed. This depression is called due to common ion. The same way, I can take another example. That is, I will take now ammonium chloride, another strong electrolyte. Ammonium chloride undergoes ionization to give ammonium ion plus Cl minus. So if I add this ammonium chloride, it's a strong electrolyte, immediately undergo ionization, complete ionization to provide ammonium ion and Cl minus. Ammonium ion again one ion common here. So I'm adding a strong electrolyte containing ammonium ion, which is already common in the case of ammonium hydroxide, it's also providing an exposure. So concentration on the right hand side increases, and concentration increases according to the 
uh, leach adult principle, the equilibrium will be shifted towards the side, so anisation getting suppressed. This suppressive milk, this suppression, we will call it as it is due to common anisation. So, this is the interesting information. This is the important information regarding the common iron effect you must understand. Okay, with this idea, let me go for ionic product of water. This is also interesting, we collected water. So, let me discuss ionic product of water also, which is a weak electrolyte. So, water undergo ionization to produce weak electrolyte. It undergo to produce H plus and OH minus. So, our majority, major quantities are ionized. So, it's an equilibrium between, uh, between H plus and OH minus and H2O water. For this, again, I am using a term again, equilibrium constant. K equal to H plus into OH minus equal to H2O. The interesting here it is. So, this left hand side, this concentration that K into H2O is equal to H plus into OH minus. Ah, uh, now this term, I am using, introduce a new term, K into H2O, concentration of water will be, I am introducing a new term that's called ionic product of water. The KW is equal to H plus into OH minus. So, this product of H plus and OH minus is called ionic product of water. This is the very interesting information. So, this is the most important information. Okay. Now here, the KW value, a recorded value, just for comparison I am giving. So different temperature equals measure. At 25 degrees centigrade, KW value, ionic product of water is 10 to the power of minus 14 mole square decimeter to the power of minus 6. But when you go for 60 degree, it is 9.6 to the power of minus 14. The value, it is the negative value that is, the, uh, it, it is going on decreasing, that means positive. Then at 100 degree, it is again increasing 5.5 to the power of minus 13 mole square to the power, decimeter to the power of minus 6. So this is the interesting information kindly follow. So ionic product increases with the temperature increases. So regarding ionic product, you must have this point, important point. So with this idea, now let me go for hydrogen ion concentration. The specifically, for, that is, when you say hydrogen ion concentration, presence of H plus in strong electrolyte as well as weak electrolyte, how do I identify, how to calculate hydrogen ion concentration? Let me discuss. This is the most important part regarding the ionic theory. Let me come for hydrogen ion concentration. What is the definition for hydrogen ion concentration? Hydrogen ion concentration is defined as the number of gram ions. Uh, Number of moles of H plus per liter of an aqueous solution. Can you follow? This is the definition. Let me repeat again. Hydrogen ion concentration is defined as the number of gram ions or number of moles of H plus per liter of an aqueous solution. This is called hydrogen ion concentration. So for pure water at 25 degrees centigrade, the value is 10 to the power of minus 7 gram ion is gram ion per liter. This is the interesting information. H plus equal to 10 to the power of minus 7 gram ion per liter. This is the interesting information for hydrogen concentration. So, hydrogen ion concentration I can express because I can express because it is value given already very small quantity, it will be always a negative. So, instead of giving a negative value, again we are introducing a new term called pH. Hydrogen ion concentration can be explained a positive value by using pH value notation. What is pH? Let me define now. The pH of a solution is defined as the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration to the phase term. Very, very interesting. So, pH of a solution is defined as the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration to the phase term. Or, mathematically, pH is equal to minus log H plus. Can you follow? Minus log H plus. What is H plus? Concentration. So concentration when you say the most important information kindly follow students. It is the different concentration term we, are, we have discussed. So here you have to assume it is nothing but normality. Kindly follow. So here you have to apply normality. Kindly follow. Okay, let me go to the next one. So when I say pH of an acid, strong acid, let me say when I say pH, I want to discuss pH of strong acid, pH of weak acid. Like, that is pH of a strong electrolyte and pH of weak electrolyte. What, how, what way we have test? Let me first discuss pH of a strong acid. So pH of strong acid, let me take a specific example. 
ICL, SCL, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, strong electrolyte, undergo 100% ionization, providing H plus and Cl minus. So for this particular acid, I can represent pH is equal to minus log H plus. As usual, what is the log H plus? Minus log. So here, instead of H plus, I am introducing the term now molarity into basicity of the acid. So now you should be very careful. So this is a normality. What is the normality? Molarity into basicity of the basicity nothing but the number of replaceable H plus. So for example, HCl it is giving only one H plus is present. So in this case, basicity is nothing but nothing but one. So here in this case, in the case of HCl, molarity and normality nothing but same. But you should be very careful when you go for sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, etc. So in that case, suppose in the case of sulfuric acid, it is basicity into, so you have to multiply molarity into 2. So you will get the normality. That normality only you have to substitute to calculate pH value. In the case of phosphoric acid, H3PO4, you have to multiply by 3. Can you follow? Basicity of the acid means number of replaceable H+. This is the interesting information for a strong acid. Now, for a... Weak acid, how to calculate? You should be very careful because in weak acid, it is not undergoing 100% under ionization. So, we are introducing alpha, degree of ionization. So, that term is also involved. So, let me give you now. HA, the weak acid, like acetic acid, it's a general term HA, undergoes ionization providing H plus and A minus. So, for this particular general weak acid, I can represent KA equal to H plus into A minus divided by HA. So, I can write that is H plus into A minus equal to KA into HA. Uh -huh. I can rewrite this equation that is KA into H, KA into HA equal to H plus whole square because the concentrator H plus equal to concentrator of A minus for monobasic acid. So, in that case, my assuming this, now I am writing H plus equal to the correspondingly that is the, the square root of KA into HA. This is the interesting information. So, the idea here it is, H plus here, that is H plus whole square, that is equal to KA HA. So, H plus equal to square root of KA into HA. So, can you rearrange now? So, automatically, now, we know from the Oswald dilution law for a weak electrolyte, alpha equal to KA into C. We have already derived. So, I can rearrange that I can re read it as, it is square root of KA divided by square root of alpha C. So from this, I can write square root of Ka equal to alpha square root C. They follow. So for this HKA, square root of Ka, I can introduce alpha into C. And this HA, I can introduce the correspondingly square root C. That is already there. So that is H plus is equal to nothing but alpha into, into square root C into square root C. Nothing but C. So H plus equal to alpha into C. Alpha degree of ionization, C concentration. Can you follow? Now, pH is equal to minus log alpha into C. The previous case, strong electrolyte, only C. But in this case, we are using alpha into C. So, whenever you want to calculate pH value of any weak acid, acid, so you have to take minus log into alpha into C, you have to introduce. This is the most interesting information. The same way, now, we can discuss for POH also. What is POH? The number of OH minus ion present in that we can define. So POH of a solution is defined as the negative logarithm of OH minus ion to the base term. Can you follow? Instead of expressing OH minus concentration, which is the negative values, so we are using a positive value like H plus, so POH we are not using. So POH is equal to, as in the case of pH, so minus log OH minus. The interesting information is, it we can treat similarly as in the case of um, uh, P, uh, pH, so I can now take sodium hydroxide standardies. So automatically, pH is equal to minus log OH minus, or pH is equal to minus log into molarity into acidity of the base. This is a base, acidity of the base nothing but number of OH minus. Sodium hydroxide acidity of the base 1, barium hydroxide acidity of the base 2. So this is the interesting information. This is for standard base. In the case of a weak base, general term P Y giving P plus B plus and OH minus, oh sorry, OH minus. So in that case, KB equal to 
b plus into y to minus divided by p y x. So I can substitute here. That is b plus into y to minus equal to k b into p y x. I can rewrite this equation as that is k b into p y equal to y h minus square because for him, um, uh, uh, that is a, ba uh, a base containing y h minus only one y h minus that base that is residual base. So y h minus is nothing but b plus. So y h is minus equal to square root of k b into p y x. So I know from the also directional law, alpha equal to square root of k b k b by c. So I rewrite like square root of k b divided by square root of c. So square root of k b I can write as the alpha into k c, alpha square root c. So this term by introducing I can write now it is y h minus equal to alpha into root c into root c. Nothing but y h minus equal to alpha into the correspondingly c, alpha into c. This is the interesting information. Can you follow? So, y to minus equal to degree of dissociation into concentration of the base. This is the case for interesting information. This is the case for the weak base. So, this is the interesting information in the case of the acids and bases, the case strong electrolyte as well as weak electrolytes. Just one, one more minute I can tell. So, based on the nature of acid and base, I can just to classify the entire solutions into three types. One is acidic solution, two basic solution, third is neutral solution. What is acidic solution? In acidic solution mean H plus ion concentration will be greater than OH minus. In neutral water, total number of H plus will be equal to total number of OH minus. But in acidic solution, total number H plus will be greater than OH minus. In that particular case, H plus that is greater than 10 to the power minus m. So pH value will be less than 7. So if you measure pH value, if it is neutral is 7, less than 7 is acidic. The same if you go for basic solution, OH minus will be greater than H plus. In that case, OH minus is greater than 10 to the power minus 7 m. So correspondingly, POH is less than 7. So in that case, I can now think of so correspondingly, we can think of the pH will be, sorry, pH will be less than 7 and pH will be greater than 7. That's interesting information. So because this is regarding for pYx, so pH will be less than 7, whereas pH will be greater than So whenever greater than 7, the basic, it will be basic. So let me conclude now. That means if you go, I will take one more. Neutral solution. In the neutral solution, H plus is equal to YH minus, it is 10 to the power of minus 7. So pH is equal to, pH is equal to 7. The interesting information is, in the case of neutral, pH is equal to pH is equal to 7. So acid means less than 7 pH, base means more than 7 pH. So the interesting information, so for any solution, I can write an equation, pH plus pH is equal to pKAW. This is the most interesting information. I hope I can stop here. I can continue that. Next class. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture.